The Abbott and Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. The Abbott and Costello program, with the modern rhythm of Will Osborne and his orchestra, Iris Adrian, our singing star Connie Haynes, and spotlighting that chubby, chunky little cherub who, when caught trying to rent his kid brother to a freak show because he heard his mother say he had grown another foot, calmly said, I'm a bad boy! Well, Costello, late again. Here I get you a nice job in Melonhead's department store, and on the very first day, you come in late for work. Well, what's your excuse this time? Well, Abbott, I, I've been out on Hollywood Boulevard, and I was watching the Santa Claus parade. Yes. And what a parade! I know that. First came the big bunch of movie stars, and then came Santa Claus, and after Santa Claus came the beautiful Lady Godiva on a big white horse. Well, what came after Lady Godiva? The cops. The cops. Oh. <laughs> Stop talking like a child. Horses in a Christmas parade. Oh, they had all kinds of animals in a parade, Abbott. You should have seen that great big giraffe. Giraffe? Yeah, you know what, Abbott? What? I wish I was the body of a giraffe and Lana Turner was the head. You wish you were the body of a giraffe and Lana Turner was the head? Why? I always wanted the long neck with Lana Turner. I... <laughs> Cost... Costello, get... get busy and dust off those counters. Come on. No, you dust off the counters. Get over there and dust them off. Abbott, I've got to hang up this sign. Oh, boy, isn't that a beautiful sign? What does it say? Look at it. Original gowns by Costello. Nifty creations, dresses, and capes for slender young figures and droopy old shapes. <laughs> C. Pierre Costello, the great French designer. <laughs> Wait a minute. How can you call yourself a French designer? I mean, designer. <laughs> have you ever been... Have you ever been to Paris? Oui, oui. I'm a well-known parasite. And... Uh... <laughs> Did you study the latest styles? We. Oui. Did you look over the French models? Wow! Uh, I see. I see. In other words, you like mannequins. No, I like girlikins. You like girlikins? Yes, babykins. Uh, I'll talk to <laughs> Answer that. Okay, 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 okay. Hello? Melon Head's department store. Uh, pardon me, but do you have a large aluminum pot? Yes, I have. My heavens, how do you get your pants on? <laughs> That's a very... Fu That's a big belly laugh. I think I'll pull it on Abbott. Hey, Abbott, have you got a large aluminum pot? No, but I've got a six-cup percolator. Now, what am I going to do with the pants? <laughs> I'm... I'm sick of talking to you. If you want me, I'll be in ladies' lingerie. You'll be where? I'll be in ladies' lingerie. Well, that's a nice picture. You're going to wear scanties for panties? No, 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 no. <laughs> you dummy. I'm going over there to pick out a blouse for my wife. Uh, a peekaboo. A what? Peekaboo. Okay. Peekaboo! No. I see you. I didn't know you liked to play kitty games. Look, will you shut up? I'm going to get my wife a blouse and a nice pair of mules. A pair of mules? Yes. I wonder what my wife would say to a pair of mules. Well, she'd probably say like everybody else. Whoa, and giddy up. I'm talking about a pair of bedroom mules. Bedroom mules? Yes, my wife has all kinds of mules in her bedroom. Red mules, green mules. Why, she even has a pair of chicken mules. Hey, Abbott, do you see all those different colored mules with your own eyes? Well, certainly I see them every night. In fact, I saw them this morning. Let me smell your breath. <laughs> Look, you dummy, doesn't your mother have mules in her bedroom? No, my father's very particular. Look, <laughs> when your mother gets up in the morning, what does she put on her feet? Corn plaster. I, no, no, no. <laughs> she must have some kind of mules. There are two kinds of mules, silk and felt. Felt? Yes. Hasn't your mother felt mules? No, sir. She never touches any kind of animals. <laughs> Look, forget about the animals. Every woman likes mules. Now, my wife uses a pair of mules to go around the house. What's the matter? Is she too lazy to walk? <laughs> when she gets up in the morning, she always slips on her mule. Why don't she keep them out in the backyard? Why, my wife needs her mules uh, to keep her feet warm. You mean you all sleep in the same bed? <laughs> sleep in the same bed. My wife keeps her mules under the bed. For goodness sakes, don't the board of health say nothing? Look, that settles it. I'm going right up to Mr. Melahan's office and tell him that you're not fit to work in a department store. Please don't do it, uh, Abbott. Why not? Don't make me lose my job. Well, I should. I'm trying to make some Christmas money to buy my dear old mother a present. What do you mean? I wanted to get her a little pet squirrel. You want to buy 
Buy a little squirrel for your mother? Yes, Abbott. I figured he could help her with the housework and do the dusting. Now, wait a minute. A little uh, bit of squirrel to Wait help. a minute. How could a squirrel help your mother with the dusting? We just tie up his tail and let him run between the Venetian blinds. Oh, that's... Right. Right. Thank you, Bud and Lou. And now let's listen to an ancient Greek named Aesop. Experience is the best teacher. Yes, experience is the best teacher. When cigarettes were scarce, most smokers took what they could get. One day, one brand, another day, some other brand. Did that experience teach anything? Listen. Actions speak louder than words. Yes, actions speak louder than words. The actions of smokers today speak louder than any words about any cigarette. For after more experience with different brands than ever before, more smokers are asking for camels than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels are the choice, for experience is the best teacher. Camel presents Will Osborne and his orchestra. From Will's new picture, Swing Parade of 1946, just a little fond affection. Costello, stop that pounding. Hey, I'm hanging up this poem I wrote over the mothballs. What does it say? Here. There once was a man named Fraser. The moths got into his blazer. They chewed up his coat, and they chewed up his pants, and they swallowed his shorts for a chaser. (laughs) Ah, that's good. That's all right. Hey, wait a minute. A young woman just walked in. See what she wants. Hello, boys. Oh, Abbott. It's the movie actress, Bessie May Mucho. (laughs) Can I wait on you, Miss Mucho? Yes. I came in here to do a little Christmas shopping. Shopping? <laughs> yes. I would like to purchase a diamond-studded platinum compact. Compact? Oh, sure, Abby. You know what a compact is. That's what the girls carried their lip rouge and face pooter in. <laughs> I would like to have the compact wrapped as a gift. You'll wrap it carefully, won't you? Oh, I'll wrap it very carefully. I'll tie some tween around it. I'll put it in some colored wrapping paper. Oh, that will be splendid. And send the package to my winter home in Sun Volley. Hey, Abbott, you get that? We're going to send the package to her winter home in Sun Volley. Sun Volley? Yes, I go boat sledding all winter. Boat sledding? Yes, don't you just love to go boat sledding? No, I'd rather go toboganing in the snow. <laughs> Well, I must be going now. And uh, bonsoir to you. And a crepe suzette to you. <laughs> hey, Abbott, imagine that dame trying to fool me with French words. Yeah. Listen to this. Howells deserves filet mignon, pommie de terre, and demi Is that all you know? I only had the 35-cent dinner. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Costello. Costello. <laughs> Costello, here, here comes your girlfriend. Lean against her. Ah, oh, there you are, you beer barrel pole cat. <laughs> I 
came down the aisle and saw you talking to that dame. I can't help it, Lena. I guess it's the Van Johnson in me. <laughs> Bow your head when you say those two sacred words. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Lena. What has Van Johnson got that I haven't got? What else? <laughs> And fat stuff. Mm. I know the way you fool around with girls. I can read your mind like a book. Ouch! What's the idea slapping my face? I just read page six. Abbott, call a doctor. Before. Well, she gets to page ten. Ouch! Mr. Costello, I came down here to find out what you're getting me for Christmas. Oh, I got you a beautiful bottle of perfumey. It's called Five Nights in a Drainage Canal. <laughs> in a drainage canal. Yeah, it's floor de sour. <laughs> I've changed my mind. You can hardly lift the cover off it. <laughs> well, I've changed my mind, Costello. I don't want any presents from you. You're nothing but a two-timing fat little flirt. Please, Lena, don't feel that way. If you just make up with me, I'll promise I'll never look at another girl if I live for a thousand years. Hello, Louis, dear. See you tonight. My, how time flies. <laughs> Well, I've had enough of you, Costello. Goodbye. Here, 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 here. What's going on here? What's the idea, Costello, of chasing that customer out of my store? Mr. Mellonhead. I've had enough oh. of you, Costello. Turn in your pencil and your Dixie cup. Uh. <laughs> I didn't even have a chance to drink out of it. Stop. Stop interrupting me. I'm the boss here. I've worked for 20 years to build up my store. Do you hear? 20 long years I've had my nose to the grindstone. Must have been a butte when you started. <laughs> I think you let your head get on it a little bit, too. Never mind about my Look, head. Mr. Look, Mr. Mellonhead, why don't you give the boy another chance? Come all on, right. give him a break. He's all right. All right, Abbott, I will. Costello, I'm going to show you how to be a salesman. Now, there's a counter over there with 100 umbrellas on it. They sell for $5 a piece. Okay. Now, Mellonhead, nobody wants to pay $5 for an umbrella. That's where salesmanship comes in. You've got to make them buy it. Now, I'll pretend that I'm a customer, and when I come up, you sell me one of those umbrellas. Now, here I come. Okay. Hmm. Good morning, clerk. I'd like to buy an umbrella. I can let you have one for $5. $5? That's too much money. You mean you don't want it? No. See, I told you nobody wants to pay $5 for an umbrella. <laughs> No, 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 you idiot, you moron. You've got to sell me on the umbrella. Why don't you pay attention to me, Costello? Stop eating those powder puffs. Powder puffs? I thought they were marshmallows. <laughs> well, they are powder puffs. Then I'll eat some of these lifesavers. Put those down. Those are corn plasters. They are? Yes. No wonder every time I hiccup, I taste mercurochrome. So. <laughs> pay attention to me. I'm trying to teach you salesmanship for my store. And here I come again. <clears throat> Good morning, clerk. I'd like to buy an umbrella. Oh, back again, eh? What do you mean, back again? I've never been in here before. I swear you were just in here. I never figured a face, especially a long face like yours. <laughs> never mind about the length of my face. What an idiot you are. Get out from behind that counter. I'll be the clerk and you'll be the customer. Now, okay. you come up and ask for an umbrella and I'll show you how to sell umbrellas. Okay, here I come. Good morning, clerk. Good morning. Would you like to buy an umbrella? No, thanks. <laughs> no, thanks? Then in heaven's name, what did you come in here for? It's raining outside. <laughs> to me, you dummy. You want an umbrella. Umbrella. Shame on you. We never call them umbrellas here in California. What do you call them? Fog sticks. Oh. <laughs> You're nothing, Costello. You're nothing but a confounded idiot. Now, you go out the front door, come in here again, and believe me, I'm going to make you buy an umbrella for five dollars. You are? Yes. I'm going to make you buy it. I'll show you what salesmanship really means. Now, get out that door and come in again. All right, Costello, come in. Costello. Costello, come in. Will you please come in? Melonhead's department store. Uh, this is Costello. Costello. For heaven's sakes, where are you? I'm across the street at drugstore. What are you doing over there? You're not going to stick me with no fight out umbrella. I can buy one over here for 39 cents. <laughs> Camel fans everywhere, lovely little Connie Haynes sings, It Might As Well Be Spring. I'm as restless as a willow in a windstorm. 
I'm as jumpy as a puppet on a string. I'd say that I have spring fever, but I know it isn't spring. I'm starry eyed and vaguely discontented, like a nightingale without a song to sing. Should I have spring fever when it isn't even spring? I keep wishing I was somewhere else, walking down a strange new street. From a man I'm yet to meet I'm as busy as a spider spinning daydreams I'm as giddy as a baby on a wing I haven't seen a crocus or a rosebud Or a robin on the wing But I feel so gay in a melancholy way that it might as well be spring It might as well be Your voice is as soothing and pleasant to my ears as the smoke of a camel is to my T-zone. The T-zone. T for taste, T for throat. The zone where smokers test the smoke of any cigarette. Yes, in his own T-zone, each smoker tests for himself the smoke of a cigarette. How the first cigarette of the morning tastes on your tongue. How even the last cigarette of the day feels to your throat. Only your T-zone can tell. And millions of smokers, forced by the recent cigarette shortage to try many different brands, found that camels truly suited their T-zones to a T. That's why today, more smokers prefer camels than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S For camels are the choice of experience. Costello, what are you doing up here in the toy department? Why aren't you working? Oh, Abbott, I love toys. Just look at this cute little electric train. Right. Yes, yes, I... <laughs> that was an electric train. What, what were you doing with that train? I thought I saw an empty seat. I... <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Acting like a little kid. I ought to buy you a doll and some games. Just get me a doll. I'll think up the games. Uh, <laughs> you'd better not let Mr. Mellonhead catch you fooling around up here. Oh, yeah? I'd like to see him walking here right now. I'd, I'd tell him where to get off. Uh-huh. Oh, so you're going to tell me where to get off, eh, Costello? Yes, Mellonhead. Where do you live? 6500 Hollywood Boulevard. Well, you get off at Vine Street. You... <laughs> Come here, you apprentice moron. Do you realize you haven't sold a thing all day? I'm going to give you one last chance, Costello. Here comes one of my store's best customers. Now see if you can wait on her. Okay. Come, okay. come on, Costello. Okay. Oh, oh, how do you do, Mrs. Nile? Hello, Miss Rabbit. My, I see you have a new washing machine on display. Oh, pardon me, it's Costello. The tub fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Niles, I don't want to have any discussions with you. Not during the happy Yule tidy st- season. Every time I talk to you, I have an awful time holding my temper in. Well, that's silly, Costello, holding your temper in and letting the rest of you spread all over the place. <laughs> oh, I wish you hadn't said that, Mrs. Niles. I was just about to say you're beautiful as a summer sky. Your eyes are like your twinkling stars. Your hair is like cloud kissed by moonbeams. Your slender white neck is like the Milky Way. 
In your mouth. Yes, yes, my mouth. Your mouth hangs open like the Big Dipper. <laughs> Costello, I refuse to talk to you. Uh, Miss Rabbit, I'd like to get something for my husband, Kenneth, that'll make him very happy. Where are you going to get a new face? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Costello, that's enough. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Niles, could we interest you for uh, some friend in the service? Why, yes. Now, what could you suggest for a soldier about 35? A blonde, about 21. <laughs> I am not talking to you, Costello. Miss Rabbit, uh, there's another present I have to get. Oh, it's, it's it? for an old flame of mine I used to run around with when I was a young girl. Well, if up. you ran around with him when you were a young girl, you'd better get him a bowl. A bowl? Uh, yeah, and something to soak his bread in. <laughs> oh. 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 Miss Rabbit, I'll, I'll never forget dear Ralph. You know... He and two other boys, Roger and Grant, proposed to me one night, but I turned them all down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, it made them so unhappy that the very next day, Roger took strychnine, Ralph took arsenic, and Grant took Richmond. <laughs> oh. oh, I've taken just about enough from you, Costello. I'm leaving the store and I'm never coming back. Goodbye. So, Costello, you insult my best customer. That does it. Get your hat and coat and get out. Go on, here's your week's salary. Just a minute. This doesn't look like a full week's salary. Where did I count it? Go on. 10, 20, 30, 41, 42, 43. It's all here. 43 cents. <laughs> no Christmas bonus? All right, here's a bonus. 44 cents I got now. Right. All right, now get out. Well, I warned you, Costello. Now you're fired. What are you going to do? I'm not going to lose my temper. Not around Christmas time anyway. I'm going to return good for evil. I'm going to spend all my salary right here in this very store. No, I don't know how you do it, Costello. Mrs. Niles is mad at you, your girlfriend is mad at you, and now Melonhead is mad at you. But there's one person in this world that loves me. That's my Uncle Artie Stebbins' wife, my Aunt Annie. Come on, Abbott. I'm going to buy her something at the cosmetic counter. Pardon me, gentlemen. Is there anything I can do for you? We carry a full line of cosmetics. Rouge, lipstick, face cream, and cleansing tissue. Cleansing what? Tissue, tissue. Well, it seems kind of silly, but if you want to tiss me, go ahead. <laughs> you tiss me and I'll tiss you. All right, all right, Costello. Let, please, let me handle this. Look, madam, my friend here is a little confused. He doesn't know what to get his Aunt Annie for Christmas. Well, maybe I can help. What kind of a complexion does she have? Is she fair, dark, or medium? Oh, she has a peach complexion. A peach complexion? Yeah, yellow and fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> well, from the description of this lady, I imagine she could use one of our facial kits. One of your what? The lady wants to sell you a kit. What do I want to buy a kit for? I'm going to get married and have kits of my own. <laughs> well, you don't understand. This is a beauty kit with full instructions. All this lady has to do is apply some of this lotion. Then she covers her face with the white of an egg, some sour cream, and a cake of yeast. She did that once. Well, what happened? The next morning, she broke out in biscuits. Oh! <laughs> now, you silly boy, you tickle me. Now, you tickle me first. Stop that. <laughs> Costello, if you don't buy something pretty soon, I'm going to walk out on you. Uh, well, just a minute, boys. How about something for the lady's hair? Does she have a snood? Certainly she's got a snood. Well, um, is it a short snood that hangs down her back? No, it's a long snoot that hangs down over her chin. <laughs> Costello, the lady is talking about your aunt's hairdo. Yes. What's your aunt's hair do? What does her hair do? Yes. Comes out when she comes in. No, Costello, we're trying to find out how she does her hair. Does she pile it on the top of her head or does she drop it down her neck? She hangs it up in the closet. No. <laughs> Look, Costello, does she wear her hair off her face? No, it takes too long to wear it off. She has to pull it out with tweezers. <laughs> Look, miss, please. Costello's aunt is short and fat, just like him. Oh, I've got just the present for her. Our special weight-reducing machine called the Melt Your Belt Away Fat Cabinet. There it is, standing right over there. Lady, those things are a big fake. Now, Costello, how can you call a thing a fake without trying it? Uh, how much does your aunt weigh? 240 pounds with a girdle on. Well, how much does she weigh with it off? I don't know. She could never get it off. <laughs> Well, now, this machine is absolutely guaranteed to take the weight off, no matter how fat you are. If you're skeptical, young man, why don't you get into the machine and try it yourself? Now, that's fair enough. Go ahead, get into the machine, and we'll find out if it works. Wait a minute, Abbott. No, no. Oh, no. Go on, get Abbott. in there. Get no, in there. Push me. Go on, get in there. Now, that's a good boy. Uh, yeah. Now, we'll turn on the machine, and you'll see how it melts the fat away in no time. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Costello. Costello, where are you? I'm right. Speak to me. Where are you? I'm right here, Rabbit. Uh, but all I can see is a little puddle of water. Well, don't step in it. It's me. <laughs> Costello will be back for candle cigarettes in just a moment. And now, this week's salute in the new series of salutes to the men who won the victory. Tonight, we salute the 36th Texas Division, heroes of Salerno, Casino, France, and Germany. In your honor, men of the Texas Division, the makers of camels are sending to your fellow servicemen overseas 500,000 camel cigarettes. <laughs> Camel Radio Shows thus honors the different units of the Army, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard, a total of a million camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week, a rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed, and in cooperation with the Good Neighbor Policy, also to Central and South America. Listen next Thursday when Camel again presents Abbott and Costello. And I'll hear Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with the final word. Ladies and gentlemen... We have had many complaints that the program is too short. So uh, we'd like to ask you a question. Ladies and gentlemen, what would you say if starting next week you could hear a full hour of Abbott and Costello? Oh, no, not that! Anything but that! Oh, how much can a guy stand? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, you! Hey, you think you're pretty smart interrupting us every week. Huh? Yeah, I've been around. I'd like to ask you a question. Go There's ahead. a mule on one side of the river. On the other side is a bale of hay. The river's 40 feet deep. How does the mule get the hay? I give up. That's what the other jackass did. Ah! <laughs> good night, folks. Good night. Good oh, night, everybody. Good night, everybody. And don't forget, buy, buy all the victory bonds you possibly can at your local theater. Get all you possibly can. Buy more and more. Come on, everybody in Patterson. We'll you next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your tea zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a T. More and more veterans of the war are being returned to civilian life every day. Many already have civilian jobs. Others are looking for jobs. Here are a few simple facts that every veteran, every employer, indeed every American should know. The average veteran will make a far better employee than before the war. His selection for service in the armed forces proved his physical and mental soundness. His training in the armed forces has probably given him special skills and know-how, useful in many civilian jobs. His service in the armed forces has given him the discipline, self-reliance, and maturity that are invaluable ingredients of success. Christmas shopping? Here's a suggestion. Give a man the one-pound Christmas tin of Prince Albert tobacco. When you give Prince Albert, you give a gift that'll go on giving top pleasure for a long, long time. Yes, in that one-pound Prince Albert tin are 400 pipefuls of the smoothest, grandest smoking a man ever tasted. The Prince Albert no-bite treatment takes out parch and sting, yet leaves in the rich, satisfying flavor of mellow tobaccos. And he's sure to like Prince Albert, for it's the biggest selling pipe tobacco in the world. And be sure on Saturday night to tune in the great Prince Albert radio show, Grand Ole Opry, coast to coast on NBC. The Abbott and Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes will be back at this very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company.